In this video, we will discuss type aliases. So let us see what we mean by type aliases and how and for what they are used in the C++ programming language. So from the name alias, we know that literally alias means an alternate or a different name that is given to someone. So let us see how this is applicable in C++. Now in C++, a type alias is a name that is a synonym for another type. So we have discussed about different types in C++ programming language and then a type alias is a synonym or a different name that can be given to a type that already exists. Alright, now the question is, why to use them? Why do we actually need type aliases? Now there are two reasons. The first one being, it simplifies complicated type definitions, making them easier to use. So there may be some type definitions that are a bit complicated and it will make those types easier to use. Now the types that we have discussed so far, they don't seem really complicated. But as you move ahead and deal with different kind of types, you will see that there could even be complicated type definitions and you may think that what if this had a different name. So it will simplify that for you. And the second reason is, it lets us emphasize the purpose for which a type is used. So for example, let's say that you are using a float data type. And from the name float, not everybody may understand what this type actually means. So you could give it a different name, which emphasizes the meaning of that type. And that will tell us the purpose for which the type is being used. Alright, so let us see the methods or the ways in which we can define type aliases. And also we will see examples of how they are done. Okay, so coming to defining type aliases, there are basically two methods. The first one is using type def. And let's see how. Here we see the keyword type def is used. And here we see a type that is already familiar to us called double, which is a double type. And here we are giving it a name called wages. Now what this actually means is wages is a synonym for double. So here we are making use of type alias. And how is that? We are trying to change the name of this double to wages. That's what it essentially means. So instead of specifying double when you make the next declaration, you can say wages instead of that. So that's what it means. Let's take one more example. Type def float percent. Now here what it means is percent is a synonym for float. That means here we are using the type def keyword and specifying that instead of the word float, we will be using percent from now on. So if I make a declaration saying percent a1 equal to 2.5, then it actually means float a1 equal to 2.5. So we are replacing the word float with percent. So that is how you can make use of type aliases using the first method. Okay, let's go to the second method now. Now the second method is by using. Now this is another keyword. Let's see how it is used. So here, as you can see, we use the using keyword and then this is the type that we are interested in and we assign it to the new name that we need. So here, letter is a synonym for character. So that means using card equal to letter means that we are replacing the word char with letter. So the next time you want to make a character declaration, instead of using the keyword or the type char, you can call it letter instead. And similarly, using int equal to num. So we are basically changing int to num. That means just the name of this type int is being changed to num. So num is now a synonym for integer. Okay, now let's go to Visual Studio Code and write some programs using these examples to understand it better. Alright, so here I am on Visual Studio Code and I have this program called alias.cpp. And as you can see here, we are using the same examples that we saw in the slides. Type def double wages. So basically wages is going to be a synonym for double and then percent is going to be a synonym for float. Now here in this line, I am making some declaration using the double data type. Instead of saying double w1 equal to 1000, I say wages w1 equal to 1000. So it essentially means the same thing because we just specified here that we are going to call double as wages. And similarly, I am saying wages w2 equal to 1500, which means that we are making another declaration of the double type and we are assigning the value 1500 to w2 
which is a double type variable okay and next we also change the name of float to percent so here i'm making another declaration percent p1 equal to 10.5 so this actually means that we are declaring a float data type and the variable name is p1 and we are assigning it the value 10.5 and again next i'm saying percent p2 equal to 15.5 which means that we are assigning 15.5 to this float variable p2 and we are now just printing the values that we have just declared just to check if it's working fine the wages earned by worker 1 is w1 and then the wages earned by worker 2 is w2 and then worker 1 will get a raise by p1 and worker 2 will get a raise by p2 so let's see if this is working fine let's run the program okay so i type g plus plus and the name of the file okay it's compiled successfully now let's run the default output file a.exe and as you can see the wages earned by worker 1 is w1 and what is w1 w1 is 1000 printed correctly then w2 is printed here 1500 which is this one and then p1 and p2 we see 10.5 percent and 15.5 percent which are these respectively so we see that by using type def we are able to create aliases of the double and the float data type here okay now let's take one more example so here i have another program and here we are going to make use of type aliases by using the using keyword so here i say using letter equal to character so what it actually means is that letter is now a synonym for character so in place of writing character or car i can write letter and similarly using num equal to int so num is a synonym for int so instead of writing int i can write num okay so here i am making a few declarations letter a equal to a that means character a equal to a i am declaring a variable a of the type character and we are assigning the letter capital a to it and then here letter b equal to b we are declaring a variable of the character data type again and we are assigning uppercase b to that variable and then next i am saying num n1 equal to 65 and we know that num now means int or integer so we are declaring a variable n1 of the type integer and i am assigning the value 65 to it and similarly, I'm declaring a variable n2 of the type integer again, and we are assigning 66 to it. Okay, and then I am printing the output, the ASCII value of A. Now, when I say A, it should actually print this letter capital A, because that's what assigned to this variable small a is equal to n1. And what is n1? n1 should print 65. And similarly, the ASCII value of this B is equal to n2, which should be 66. Now, let's run the program and see if it is working correctly. Okay, I type G++ and name of the file which is alias 2.cpp. It has compiled successfully without any errors. Now let's run the default output file a.exe. And as you can see, the ASCII value of A. So instead of this A, this A is printed and N1 is 65 that is printed. And similarly, the ASCII value of B is 66 that is also printed correctly. So we can see that by using type aliases using this using keyword, we were able to change the name of char to letter and int to num and the program works just fine all right so with that i hope you got the idea of type aliases and how they are used and the reason why they are used so hope this was helpful see you in the next one